Prepping for multiple weeks of living out of a vehicle can be very daunting. There are so many things we take for granted in normal day-to-day -day life that don't exist when living this way. And that's why I thought a dual battery setup was a big need for efficiency. And right now I'm on the final day of the two week journey through Colorado using the FJ's dual battery setup. And I wanted to dive into that today. I want to kind of show you how I set up the battery system, what the battery system is and uh, what I use it for. So let's dive in. The heart of the dual battery setup is actually inside of the FJ Cruiser here. This is just a spot that I found to be best as there wasn't much room in the engine compartment and I wanted to kind of keep things inside and kind of contained in one area. This also makes it easier to get wires places to charge things that need to charge as far as fridges, batteries, phones, stuff like that. So the first thing I want to do is give a run out of all the parts that I used to make this dual battery setup happen. Um, when I was looking for a kit to make this work, I found a kit on Renogy that basically had a DC to DC charger, a Bluetooth module that goes into that charger so you can monitor things, and as well as a little monitor to see what the battery's like and also how the charging is going. I then paired that with their 100 amp hour smart lithium ion battery, um, which has been amazing so far. I'm gonna dive into why that is such a great battery in a minute here. Now I'm gonna go from start to finish on this battery setup, basically show you how the power gets from one place to another. So. How most dual battery setups work is you plug in right to the battery. Um, and you're probably thinking, well, okay, then you're gonna drain the starter battery all the time. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. You actually don't with this setup. You will not drain the starter battery. But essentially have two leads here. I have a ground and a positive, and that is running from the starter battery, which is getting power from the alternator ultimately, and running over here to a 40 amp fuse on the positive, and then that feeds through the firewall into you know all the under the trim pieces and everything into the setup I have in the back, which I'm gonna show you. Now, without diving into too much detail in this video, this can get a little complicated with running wires places because you do wanna make sure they are secure, they're not rubbing on anything, and also that they're kind of hidden from everything else. So the engine bay, to me, is probably my worst part as I had to run wires here, run it under this little flap here, and go into the firewall. It's still run pretty well, but obviously you can still see everything because it's just out in the open in the engine bay. In the inside though, I do have everything hidden pretty well. So I have those wires then run under here and then going to the heart of this whole system, which is mounted on my air down gear up drawer system, which actually worked out really well. I was really concerned about where to put the charger, the battery, the Bluetooth module, all of that. And it's honestly worked out perfectly on this air down gear up system that I have. There's a little, little flap that hangs out in the front because this is a sleeper system so you can kind of fold this out and sleep on it there's a little area up here where the drawer system doesn't go as far up and you still have place to store stuff underneath but it worked out well to mount all of these things so the wires run in they run up out of my wall here which you can't really see it's hidden um, and it goes into my 30 amp dc to dc charger this is what essentially is going to stop pulling from your starter battery and only letting you drain from your dual battery or your secondary battery. As soon as your key goes off, it will stop pulling from any power up front and it will only pull from this battery and allow you to charge things and basically drain this battery without affecting your startup. Now the cool thing is with this charger, you can also run solar. I am not running solar at this point, obviously, um, but you can run solar from this. So in, eventually if I need solar, I might use the same system to mount solar. But as I'm gonna get into later, I really don't think I need solar. This thing charges incredibly fast. It's insane. The other cool thing about this charger is that you can put a Bluetooth module on it, which is super handy. I use it all the time. So there's a Bluetooth module back under here that's plugged into it. And essentially from my phone and from the app, I can just open the app if I'm near the FJ and see what the battery's at. I can see how it's charging. I can see all the health of the battery, everything. It's, it's actually insane how much data you can get from that module and it's definitely worth it. And it also it's included in that bundle. Now the battery itself I have mounted right here. It's kind of, it's a little bit rigged. It, it looks nice and it works well, but I had to kind of do it my own way to, to make it work because there was no other, no other options out there for mounting the battery like I do back here. Um, I have brackets mounted to the body here, obviously sealed, I have bolts going through. Sealed that up and I have a little battery tray right here hanging under the air down gear up system. It has been so stable so far, no issues. I've been jostling it around this whole two week trip. Every single day it's been just bouncing around like crazy and it just, it stays steady. The vehicle's bouncing, but the battery's steady. It's not moving too much. It's not breaking anything, so it's perfectly fine. But yes, I have the wires from the charger going to the battery, obviously with the fuse in between. I do have fuses 
uh, in between each part just to make sure they're 40 amp fuses. That's just a little bit above the 30 amp uh, power of the charger. But what I like about this smart battery is first of all, it's lithium ion. Uh, I was running AGM in my other build in the Baja build and it was just, it was not working because one time I drained it below 50%, which you shouldn't do on a battery. I didn't know that it was kind of an accident. Um, and I had to like jump start it to get it to charge again because it was down below its threshold. With lithium ion, you can run it to zero. Obviously I don't ever really do that and I don't really have to do that, but you can use that full 100 amp hours for whatever you need. The second thing I love about this battery is that it is self heating, it is a smart battery, so it knows the temperature. With lithium ion, you don't wanna get it too below freezing and it will self heat using its own power um, if it gets that low to make sure that you know, you're not killing the battery cells. The one thing to keep in mind with this system is you don't want these components out in the elements. The battery should be fine for the most part, but the charger definitely not. The Bluetooth module, no, you shouldn't have that out. Um, so that's why I kind of put them under here. And honestly, it's been great. This whole trip, I do have like my compressor packed under here typically, and I have like a tow rope and uh, just a jump pack back here. And it's perfectly fine. I can still fit things in here. Obviously, I'm more cautious of what I put back in here because I don't want stuff rubbing on on anything up up here. But if it's low, it's totally fine. Uh, and so far, I've loved it because it's easy access to the system, but it's also pretty well hidden. So as we move on, we're gonna move to the back corner of the FJ, and that's where all the charging happens and everything's plugged in. Uh, so I have wires going from the battery under the seat over there through the side panels um, and kind of hidden in that little area back there. I found that the back for the FJ is the best place to kind of have a hub for all the charging and fridges and everything like that. So the wires are coming in around the side and there's this little compartment here on the side, which I'll show you in the B-roll, um, that basically has the jack and a few other things, but there's also a little bit of room in there for some wires. And I also have a fuse box in there because my biggest gripe with my last setup is I didn't really have a fuse box, I just wires going everywhere into the battery. Not a good idea. So I got a fuse box, so I got two leads from the battery coming back here into that fuse box. And then from there, I can disperse wires to whatever things that I need to run. So what I'm running currently from that fuse box is um, a port for the fridge. So it's just a normal cigarette lighter. I have one of those. And then I also have a strip from Blue Sea Systems. It has a cigarette lighter port and it has uh, two other circular ports that each have two USB slots. And those are perfect. I can honestly fill those up most times with you know, heated blankets, iPhone charger, camera battery charger, drone battery charger, all that sort of stuff. So I can usually have those filled up pretty well. And all of that stuff, including the fuse box and the wires, those were all kind of Amazon finds. So the wire I'm running is six gauge and the fuse box has six fuse slots for various, you know, whatever fuse size you need. Uh, but other than that, that is a pretty simple system. And I'm gonna kind of dive into what I use it for and how long it operates. The main thing that this battery system is charging is the fridge. And right now I'm, I'm running an Iceco VL45 Pro S fridge. Um, this thing has been incredible. I actually have a review on it, so go check it out if you wanna learn more about it. But I'm just gonna give you a brief kind of rundown of the specs. So this thing can go zero to 58 degrees Fahrenheit, and it has kept my stuff cold. I run it at 34 degrees and it has been cold this entire trip. There's been warm days, like today is probably in the 70s right now, and some cold nights below freezing. So it's kind of a mix between, and it honestly doesn't drain incredibly much. Um, when, I'm using, when I did the calculation of this fridge when I first got it, it was supposed to last me three and a half days off of a full battery, if nothing else pulling from that battery. And honestly, I could see that as being somewhat correct because when I'm running it at night, especially in these colder temps, it's not running too much. Um, so it would definitely keep it cool for three and a half days, maybe even four days, but it is charged through the cigarette lighter. I have a DC charger kind of just going into that, um, but it has tons of space for all my food. It keeps all my food cold. And in one night, if I just have this thing running, it'll maybe get down to 85%, the battery, maybe 85%. Um, and then my dual battery will be charged up within maybe an hour of driving or, or honestly less most times. It is crazy how fast that battery charges. Just with that 30 amp DC to DC charger, it's actually insane how fast that charges. But I would say this is one of the more power efficient fridges. It doesn't drain quite as much um, and it does this job really well. And to me, it is, is very worth it 100%. I love this thing. Um, and this thing has helped me tremendously on this trip. But besides the fridge, I do have a heated blanket that I did use once or twice during the trip just to kind of see how it worked. Um, and it was pretty, pretty bad on the battery. It actually pulled a pretty decent amount. So it went into the cigarette outlet, um, cigarette lighter outlet. And I think that night with the fridge and that plugged in and maybe a camera battery too, it did go down to like, I think 60 or 
55 to 60%, somewhere in there. Uh, so that did drop it pretty good. But again, within like an hour and a half, battery fully charged. But yeah, overall, I've been incredibly impressed with this system. I've had no issues with it. Wait, you know what? There's one thing I didn't talk about and there's one thing I do actually have an issue with. I didn't really talk about this because I don't ever use it. Um, I do have a Renogy one core in here, which essentially it's a little screen that you plug in and it kind of connects to your battery. Um, the problem with it is though, you need Wi-Fi to set it up, you need service to set it up. And I have not been able to set it up correctly, even at my house. I just I haven't been able to set it up. I have no clue why. You're supposed to be able to read um, what your charger is pulling or what your charger is charging and what your battery is pulling and the battery statistics and all that. And essentially what you can view on your phone. I've wanted that because I've wanted a way to view it off the grid if I didn't have my phone with me or something. But I've not been able to set it up. So I honestly really don't like that thing. I've probably spent four or more hours just trying to figure that thing out. I've not been able to do it. So it's hanging on the wall here. It's still plugged in. I can try to view things. I've got it connected to the charger, which doesn't really help me because I want it connected to the battery to see what the percentages are. And I cannot connect it, whatever I do. So if you know what and what that is and how to fix it, let me know in the comments because that is very frustrating. That is a one downside of this that combo pack I got. I can't get it to work and I hate that it needs Wi-Fi to run off of and to kind of set up. I just, I hate that, it's annoying. I wanna be fully remote without any of that. So that's that's kind of dumb in my opinion. So that's the one thing I hate about the system, but otherwise it has been great. On this trip, I've had no issues with the system, nothing going wrong, nothing, no fuses getting blown out, nothing. Um, and it has been a huge help. There's a few things that might change, maybe move some wires around, plug some other things into the system. Like right now I have my radio plugged into my starter battery. I hate that, so I'm eventually gonna reroute that into this system. But yeah, overall, I would highly recommend the system besides the Renogy One Core little screen. That's kind of dumb. But other than that, highly recommend the system. I have loved it, no issues at all. Um, and it really has helped me kind of keep things charged on the trip without having to worry about plugging things in while driving. That was always a pain on these trips. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I know this video is kind of all over the place. There's so many different things to talk about. Um, I know there's a lot of details you probably want to know that I didn't talk about. So let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.